On the Build Show today, we're going to take a deep dive into crawl spaces, the good, the bad, the ugly, and how to build them better. Now, if you're building basements too, stay tuned. I've got some good things for you as well. Let's get going. Okay guys, coming to you from my studio space today where I'm going to use some photos and some videos to show you some examples of some terrible crawl spaces, why we want to build them better and how to build them better. So let's get going. First of all, crawl spaces. This is what we're referring to uh, right here. This is a picture of a crawl space vent, which means with this vent right here, we probably have a space underneath the house where we can crawl into. Sometimes you refer to these as a pier and beam foundation as well, where you've got the house on wood above some piers, but it's this telltale sign right there of the vents that you're going to see. Now here's a guy who's about to climb into one. Usually there's some amount of crawl space, meaning you can actually get underneath the house, but it's typically a very tight space. Now I would tell you that crawl spaces are code legal and code compliant but they're also 99% of the time terrible and very dumb. I'm not a fan of the typical crawl space construction that you see out there happening all over the US. And here's what they look like. In fact, I'm, I'm sorry to say I built a lot of these when I worked in Portland, Oregon. Here's a photo of a crawl space. I think this is off of greenbuildingadvisor.com. Um, you've got some kind of black poly down on the ground, a lot of wet uh, stuff happening, probably some moisture intrusion. Insulation has fallen out and gotten wet. Spotty down there. Here's an older one that looks like someone tried to seal it up. But crawl spaces on typical American houses, they're terrible. You do not want to crawl into one. I've been into a lot of crawl spaces and they are nasty places with some terrible air quality. Usually there's some mold growing somewhere because of moisture down there. It's not a great place. And then you couple that by adding some ductwork into the space. And man, when you see ducts down there, you think, oh, my air from my house is going through that space. There's going to be some amount of leakiness in the ducts. So most likely, I'm sucking some air up from that crawl space. This is a terrible way to build. We don't want to do standard vented crawl spaces. Not a good way to go. What do we want to do? Well, think about this. In the north, all the northern builders and Canadians that are watching this video go, you guys are crazy for building crawl spaces. Why not just build a basement? There's my buddy Mark uh, from My Fix It Up Life. Looks like he's installing some Roxel here. And this is what a standard basement looks like. Why wouldn't we treat our crawl spaces like a basement or like a short basement? Uh, let's see if we can find another good image or two of a uh, basement. Here's one right here. Look at this. We've got some Roxel bats, it looks like. And in this basement, what else do you see? Here's some ductwork right above here. And that ductwork now is running through a conditioned space in a space that doesn't have moisture and mold issues. It doesn't have venting in from the outside. Much, much smarter. We've talked in the past why we don't want our vents up in our hot, humid attics. The same is true. We don't want our ducts into our nasty, vented crawl spaces. When those ducts down in the crawl space leak air, they're going to put the house into a negative situation, and the house is going to want to suck up air from the outside, and most likely it's going to suck up air through that crawl space. And how do we build a crawl space that's going to work better? Let me walk you through a couple here. And I'm actually going to show you a couple stills and some short videos from videos I've made. Look in the link in the description. You'll see a bunch of these other videos if you want to go deeper. But here's a crawl space I built a couple years ago. And one thing you'll notice on this outside wall is there's no venting. This is going to be what's called a conditioned crawl space. No venting from the outside. And in fact, what I'm building here is a short basement. Now, where I'm standing in this video, I'm standing on top of this yellow uh, vapor barrier. This happens to be stego wrap. And we're gonna actually going to pour a concrete slab on top of that. And then this house has a perimeter stem wall. Sometimes pier and beam houses will have perimeter piers, meaning concrete piers. And then they'll have a skirt board of stucco or stone maybe to encapsulate that. But I much prefer to do a concrete stem wall on the outside and then I'll do concrete piers on the inside. Now, if we fast forward a little bit on this video, you'll see that we actually poured a basement slab down there. There's the guys actually pouring that slab. And now we really do have a short basement, just like we were building a house in the north. And once that's in place, then we can actually frame on top of that. And here's me later on in construction. Now, see, we've poured a stem wall, 
And then on top of the stem wall is a recess in there that is going to accept our floor joists or floor trusses in this case. And now we have a short one, you know, it'd be tougher to crawl in this one, but with that concrete slab, I actually left this client with a creeper, you know, a mechanics creeper. So you could actually creep around in that crawl space, do whatever you need to. And again, it's within the thermal envelope of the house. It's within the conditioned crawl space. Okay, now here's an older video of mine. This one still applies though. In fact, this is about 10 years old. So if you want to see what Nat looked like in 2010, here's us spraying some closed cell foam into, again, a conditioned crawl space. Now, closed cell foam is a great choice for a crawl space because it's not moisture sensitive. It won't absorb any water and it's also a vapor barrier. So uh, we don't need to worry about vapor drive either in either direction really from the inside or the outside. So if you're looking now, sorry, it's a little shaky. This is my flip video from 2010, but you can see on that perimeter stem wall, we've, we've sprayed actually closed cell foam around the entire perimeter. The other beauty of closed cell foam is it's actually going to air seal us really well. So where these eye joists come in and sit either on top of or in a recess on that stem wall, we're able to air seal that space really, really well. And you really only need, if you're in the south, typically two inches of closed cell foam. That's going to give you an R14. Uh, sorry for the shakiness here. This is long before I had a, uh, uh, any kind of production value. All right, now let's fast forward a little bit, and I want to show you uh, a friend of mine and how he builds crawl spaces in another part of the country. This is actually Addison Homes based out of uh, South Carolina. I think they're in Greenville. And this is a presentation that Todd, the uh, owner and president of the company, gave. And if you don't have um, the kind of uh, uh, budgets that I work with to do a really top of the line crawl space like I just showed you, here's another one that's a little bit more affordable, but also very, very good from a building science perspective. So where he is, he's using concrete block to build the foundation. Again, he's got a perimeter solid wall out of concrete block. And then here's his piers that are going to support beams, you know, typically wood beams, and then joists that will sit on top of that. And then uh, if you look on the outside here, he's done some waterproofing just as if this was a full 8 or 10 foot deep uh, concrete foundation. Whether you're building a crawl space or a standard foundation, you need to do your waterproofing correct to make sure that space is going to be uh, dry. So he's got his waterproofing on the outside. And then on top of his waterproofing, it's always best practice to run a drainage board. This happens to be by uh, the guys at Delta. And this is a little hard to tell from this photo, but this is a, a dimple mat that has a fabric facer on the side. So against the waterproofing is a dimple mat, kind of like an egg crate that's going to go against the foundation wall. And then on top of that dimple mat is this uh, gray fabric right here, and that's a filter fabric, so that when we backfill against here, we're not going to fill up that space. We're always going to have at least a one-inch air gap in front. That way any water that migrates through the soil is going to hit that air gap and drop all the way down. And then he's got a perimeter drain around the outside here. Uh, the guys at uh, Polywall make an Arroyo drain. That's a really, really good one I've done some videos on before. Okay, so now let's take a look at what his crawl space looks like. In fact, I love how he makes this. Uh, he has his carpenters build this little ladder that goes from a closet, and he's got a little hatch. You also notice the hatch here is not insulated and it doesn't need to be air sealed because when you get down into the space, this is what you're looking at. Look at this. This is gorgeous. He's got a white uh, vapor barrier down there. This looks like it might be clean spaces. It's been taped on all the seams. It's been caulked and um, adhered to the piers, so we've got a nice tight vapor barrier. Any moisture migrating up from that soil is not going to make it pass there. And then on the outside walls, he's not using closed cell spray foam. He's using a sheet insulation. This is a uh, rigid insulation. It looks like this happens to be Dow Thermax. And he's adhering that probably um, with some concrete nails uh, to the outside perimeter now. And he's got an airtight, insulated, encapsulated crawl space. This is really impressive. This is from a presentation that Todd did at IBS with me. Now, a couple options for, uh, for vapor barriers. These guys at Clean Space make a really nice one. I've used this one before. Uh, you could also uh, get the one by Stego. Those guys make some really good products. I like Stego because they've got some excellent tapes that will adhere really well to concrete in your concrete piers. And look at this guy down here. This is a beautiful uh, crawl space. We've got the ducting in there. We've got this Stego wrap. My guess is the insulation's behind here in this case. 
but we now have a very hospitable place. There's no concerns about bugs, about rodents, about rats down there. In effect, we've got a short basement. Uh, now, what happens if you can't afford all that? Or what happens if you're watching this and you're retrofitting? You're not building new like I am or doing a whole house remodel like I typically am. One way that you might consider doing a retrofit is to do this. This is closed cell foam sprayed in the crawl space up on the bottom decking. Now, typical insulations, we don't want to use bat insulation or the standard uh, kind of fiberglass insulation in your crawl spaces. Because when we use those, we're going to be prone to a lot of issues. We can get airflow through there really easily. Uh, it's really easy for condensation to happen down there in those moist crawl spaces, especially in the south. But this can be an option if you have to stay with a vented crawl space. This is one to two inches of closed cell foam sprayed right underneath the decking. So we've got a perfect air seal. You can see it's sprayed onto the eye joist as well. This happens to be from my Friday video where I was talking about a Houston uh, flood victim that's been rebuilding. Check out the video if you haven't seen it. But this is a good way to, to retrofit if you need to and you're not building new and can't do these practices. Lastly, if at the end of the day you're building new and you're worried about your crawl space, am I going to do it right? I'm not sure I, my builder has the ability to do that or I'm worried about doing that myself. My last recommendation is to avoid them. If you're not able to do a conditioned crawl space and really do these details right, the next best thing is to go with a concrete slab. Most of the time, if you're building in southern climates, you don't have to worry about frost line. Uh, and so a concrete slab is a great choice. Here's one that I poured here in Austin. And think about this now. When we build a house on top of this, there's no issues with air under there. There's no water issues. There's no critter issues. We can make a really tight seal between the framing and the concrete on the outer edges. And now we don't have those issues from that crawl space. We also don't have wood underfoot and the give that that wood gives you. And we don't have insulation down there too. So it's not the best choice in a colder climate. But if you're in the south and you can't do your crawl space right, you might consider slab on grade as well. Guys, thanks for joining me for a deep dive on crawl spaces. The good, the bad, and certainly there's a lot of ugly out there. Do it right, spend the time and money, do the research. Check out my links below. I'm gonna put a bunch of links in there for you, both from videos that I've made. I'm gonna send you to a couple links from some white papers from buildingscience.com. There's a lot of good reading on the interwebs about how to build a condition crawl space correctly, but I wanna encourage you to do that. If you've been building them vented for years, stop doing that. And if you've got a vented crawl space currently, consider doing a rehab project on that and turning that into a condition crawl space or at a minimum using that closed cell foam underneath there to lock everything in and seal it up so that your house isn't exchanging air with that crawl space anymore. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.